As we have discussed before, the information war is fiercely at hand. At a time of increased knowledge and technology, spiritual awakening, dark awakening, uh, we find the playing field is evening out. No longer do we need radio or television cooperation to be heard. The world has become an information web and we can now pick and choose where and what we give our attention to. Independent research and inquiring minds have now become a formidable opponent for the mainstream media machine. How do we know this? Well, anyone who dares to have ideas that contradict the establishment narrative are suddenly labeled nutcases and threats to the safety of society. Yet, we understand all of this is merely a smear campaign against those of us who know media, history, and even the academic institutions are not sources of gospel truth, even though they arbitrarily claim to be the authority. And those who question this are foolish conspiracy theorists. Yet, many and most of our questions stem from conspiracy fact. Hence, their desperate use of the pejorative term theorist. As if Operation Mockingbird was just a theory. Project Phoenix, Project Paperclip, um, the National Defense Authorization Act of 2013. All theories, right? The deliberate mind-controlling mechanisms of American compulsory education based on the Orwellian Prussian education system. The same standardized testing disinfo box we all are subjugated to for 12 years instead of a proper classical education, you know, with logic and so forth. They want shallow workers, not deep thinkers. But I guess all that is just a theory as well. All these elements are proven facts, yet the MSM or mainstream media political or academic sectors will never mention them, and by every dishonest smear tactic possible they will aim to disable, discredit, and silence those that do. Hence the recent MSM's desperate and pathetic fake news crusade. And unfortunately many of those who speak truth supply little evidence and um, honest historical foundation to authenticate their claims. Sometimes emotion will outweigh substance. Um, there's personalities or opinion that will usurp detail. And other times, absolute lies will be utilized for shock value and clicks. It is situations like these that tarnish the value and relevance of alternative research. Giving the MSM more fuel to run their agenda and making hard-working and honest researchers an easy target for ridicule. Since the establishment knows they are liars and the truth is buried in age-old conspiracies, they must destroy the steady development of conspiracy fact by promoting conspiracy theory and equating it with ignorance and insanity. I mean, it's like the groupthink is powerful. Anyone that goes against anyone that speaks on anything related to conspiracy, they automatically say they have a mental illness or, you know, the tin hat thing or, um, you know, you're not taking your meds. You have a mental illness. You're psychotic. It's like the same parroted terms and phrases over and over again. I mean, the group think is it's so apparent and it's amazing that these people can't figure this out. Anyhow, let's continue. As well, they make poster children and mascots for their stigmatic war game. Exaggerated buffoons and characters average people would never take seriously. In turn, making their message or anything related to conspiratorial ideas crazy and just as loony as the buffoons speaking about them. This relates to the saying, a bad apple ruins the whole bunch. They directly play on this psychological model by discrediting the entire truth movement through staged deterrences and red herrings like this uh, Comet Pizza Gunman story 
and, uh, you know, Alex Jones or recently Donald Trump. I guess the biggest point for us all to understand is that all of this is able to happen because the majority of people have no idea what the mainstream media represents and why it even exists. This majority also believes the MSM is there to inform them, keep them abreast on the developing world around them, and always have their best interests in mind. And those of us who understand this is laughable and even disturbing are in fact the minority. And knowing this, we cannot be surprised when we see the MSM pulling these desperate hat tricks on the public. They know the majority is dead sleep. And they have been developing this social slumber through their Kabbalist media machine for nearly a century now. And they are only trying to save their investment. Their goals and agendas depend on it. And the conspiracy community poses a serious threat to their success. While we have been systematically waking people up, they aim to rock the babies back to sleep. Today I'm going to attempt to provide a logical, detailed, and in-depth examination of our so-called news sources material. We are going to uncover the truth and lies. We will demonstrate how questioning the status quo or even theorizing malicious intent within it can be done coherently, balanced in its presentation, sincere in its purpose, and truthful in its content. This is how we defeat their rhetoric. Not by cowering, worrying, or flipping out, or giving in, but by outsmarting them and choosing honesty as our policy, the Most High God as our guide, and reason as our weapon. Though there is one main concept we must define before anyone is to understand this fake news persuasion, it seems no one has addressed it, and the establishment relies on us taking it for granted hoping we don't stop and ask about the pink elephant in the room. And this is the simple question of not what is fake news, but what is real news? And how do we identify it? And which sources concentrate on integrity, social and moral development, and moreover aren't compromised? And do you think the MSM wants you asking these questions? Of course not. So they bank on the fact that you will take them to be the real trustworthy news sources by default. And to deter you from even questioning this mindset, they manufacture elaborate tales and pseudo controversies. They aim to keep you focused on a new and dangerous fake news that's out there lurking. So you will assume they must be the real news and are the knights in shiny armor that will protect you from the fake. Can we not take an honest look at this dynamic and detect clear mental abuse? This dynamic describes a typical abusive parent and child relationship or master and slave arrangement. It is true and well known that the average person would never take the time or even have the interest in evaluating these ideas. This we understand. And it is this majority hive mind that the MSM feeds on. Most people are too busy being trapped in their own psychodramas, serving their desires and empty devotions, chasing monetary goals, pleasing or appealing to the opposite sex or same sex, boggled down by social controversies and identity politics, false paradigms and dialectics, in other words, mass mind control provided by the same sources we are told to trust as sources of real news. Yet anyone outside these dynamics is a nutty conspiracy theorist. Okay.
You want to dismantle fake news? Ask the question, what is real news? And analyze that. Put the spotlight on the real issue of concern. Don't fall for their reverse psychology and sleight of hand tricks. They perceive us as foolish and naive children. Their rhetoric and propaganda couldn't make it more clear. They have always aimed to point us in the wrong direction. So we analyze he who is pointing the finger. Find out if his house is built on a rock or sand. The truth speaker will survive the storm. The MSM is a massive facility built on pure sand. And our foundation is built on rock. We reveal evidence and examples that expose their programs. So now they must make us all look like a crazy, psychotic little tribe of ostracized madmen and women to their majority informed society. Overall, what the mainstream society does not understand is that network news media is an umbrella psychological operation managed between corporate entities, government think tanks, intelligence agencies, and the university system. This is conspiracy fact. Follow the money trail. All this stuff is public and easy to find. MSM is an elaborate thought management program in the guise of fair and balanced news reporting. By analyzing all of these articles they push, we can easily break down the consistent deception. Knowing that their plans are becoming obvious, they create agents of blame, red herrings to pin their deceptive tactics on. They even use the accurate terminology in their descriptions. MSM has been gaslighting America and the world for a while now, and here they utilize Trump as the bearer of blame. Convenient and effective. And we continue to fall for it. Or how they use fake news rhetoric to blame the results of a fake election. They blame Facebook, the ink you tell CIA data mining psyop engine um, they place these groups at odds as if they are all in competition with one another when in fact they all are funded by the same organizations and governed by secret intelligence but again the MSM banks on the fact that the majority of society has no idea what ink you tell is or Facebook's direct relationship with the Central Intelligence Agency or the agency's direct influence over MSM via Project Mockingbird and plant journalists agents like Anderson Cooper, amongst many, many others. Clinton, the criminal con woman and left side of the Hegelian dialectic, has been tapped for the fake news PSYOP participation as well. <laughs> liars calling others liars. The old kettle and teapot story, huh? Yet and still, we eat it up. They are successfully creating a societal high school dynamic, like the popular kids versus the nerdy outcasts, where the whole school is so cool and knows it all, distracted by sex, sports, and drama, why they all laugh and bully our little splinter group that is more concerned with details, uh, truth, and the inner workings of the world around us, focused on things spiritual and denying the flesh, questioning society instead of embracing it children. They aim to design a dysfunctional society of selfish and zealous children. Why do you think all the blockbuster films are based in fantasy or comic book characters nowadays? They put trauma in the news to frighten us and prepare fairy tales for us to ease our minds and weaponize our imaginations. Preparing us for our virtual future, the post-reality era. So they emphasize nostalgia. Uh, I'm a very nostalgic person myself, so I am very aware of this. I'm very sensitive to it. So it's, it's very easy to pick out the manipulation in what they're doing. They bring back our uh, favorite childhood pastimes, putting us all right back in a state of childhood via sound and visual manipulation. Child cartoons and animation for adults video games and fruitless technological distractions, slowly producing a more immature society, 
less families, a uh, prevalent man-child syndrome takes hold, less marriage, less responsibility, more entertainment, more searching for self-gratification. Steadily dialing back the age of maturity until we are all insecure, helpless little children in need of a parent. And here comes MSM to protect us from the big bad world out there. Though we believers already have a father, the secular world is fed to the beast. So as they spoon feed us entertainment, they preoccupy us with fear-based material. We tend to see the same terminology and descriptive words to inflict subconscious wounds and perpetuate a state of insecurity. The patterns are everywhere and their agendas are easy to spot. Fear, fear, fear from every angle, death, tragedy, dismay, and constant worries of multifaceted attacks. To the knowledgeable, these patterns are indicative of basic trauma-based mind control. But to the majority society, it is so-called real news. Included with fear and trauma programming is the element of agitation propaganda. We've talked about this many times on the channel. It's probably the most important thing to understand about mainstream media. It's one of their most powerful weapons. The aspect of media that starts wars, revolution, and unrest within the targeted society. Here is where we find issues on race, gender, Islamophobia, and sexual assault being perpetually weaponized and hammered into our heads. A good example is the contrived LeBron James vs. Trump story. Just one small example. Um, typical black vs. white race agitation propaganda. Race baiting nonsense. Similar to the Kaepernick controversy we went into some depth on. We find a trend in the use of popular athletes to play the role of black activists vs. white supremacy. It's an overdone and obvious theme in media today, but they continue to utilize its distracting and divisive abilities. Though I consider the majority of these agitation propaganda stories as fake news, um, even if they were real, you know, we understand trivial controversy and personal disputes happen every day, but why does it become mainstream news? Why are these trivial issues so important? Why is it important for the masses to be so concerned with the opinions and activities of celebrities? In other words, their real news doesn't appear to be news at all. More like entertainment, not informative reporting that will help us in understanding the world around us. And let's disregard their persuasive and generic buzz term fake. What if we want to investigate engineered news? Watch the dynamic change. I highly doubt you would see them mention engineered news in the headlines. See, they can demonize blanket terms like fake and hoax, but they will keep a distance from more scrupulous terms like engineered news or disingenuous news. This will cause their straw man to fall apart. Their smoke screen will clear because all they ever produce is crafty and engineered journalism. These are the types of propaganda stories they use to agitate your attention towards their preconceived, divisive, liberal issues. The best way to debase and destabilize a society is through extreme liberalism. And that's what we're seeing happen today. All the problems in the world become those of liberal issues. And the media is employed to indoctrinate these concepts into the society. Like race equality, gender equality, gay, trans rights, Islamophobia, racial discrimination, and race conflict. And whatever they can show you to piss you off or get you to take a side. Preoccupy your mind with conflict. And trust them to keep you up to date on what allegedly matters. They can make any issue they want matter if they create enough reports on it, in turn shaping our reality for us. And right now, division through liberation is one of their main goals. When one points these obvious things out, their whole fake news rhetoric seems to just blow away in the wind. 
But again, uh, those speaking that are part of a small minority and will be chastised by the hive mind society for wrong think and by design placed in the default conspiracy theorist box. So the MSM may maintain their information stronghold and media monopoly on truth. So if we assess all of these agenda-based reports and blatant agitation propaganda coupled with their patterned prevalence throughout these alleged real news outlets, their manipulative words and media craft loses its power and they lose their authority and turn out to be just an echo chamber just as dishonest and fallacious and nonsensical as the tabloid sites and magazines and fake news sources they seem to be trying to expose so when we hear them desperately claim that pseudo journalism like Washington Post New York Times BuzzFeed uh, CNN or NPR are sources of real news, not to mention the also controlled opposition agitprop news sources like uh, the Young Turks or Rebel Media and Infowars. Altogether, they um, round out the body of the PSYOP. You know, you got your independent and you got your mainstream, but they're all playing the same tactics. They're all reading from the same script, just picking the side of the dialectic. We can simply analyze all their content, spot the pattern agenda-based stories, usually a left or right flavor, and easily pick out their consistent agitation propaganda reporting that all matches up together across the board. The patterns blow their cover, but they rely on a large media base of distractive trivia and emotive novelty mixed with endless entertainment to keep you from noticing these patterns. True and real news is organic, it's uh, unpredictable, it's authentic, balanced, and void of patterns, void of number codes and consistencies, and void of repetitive themes. This alone proves mainstream media and network news outlets are not sources of real news because they produce content that directly contradicts every aspect that defines it. This is why they are desperately trying to pose a crusade against the so-called fake news, because they have been producing fallacious and engineered content from the beginning, and they fear we are catching on, so they must deflect our suspicion. It's like that shady friend who stole the cash out of your wallet, but spent the entire day with you scouring your apartment in hopes of finding it. Or the smarmy used car salesman that sold you a lemon after he convinced you they had the most trustworthy cars in town. See, when profit is involved, the devil is always lurking in the midst. And corporate news is a billion dollar industry. Yet they want to attack puny internet sites for profiting from making up sensational stories online. Can we see the discrepancy here? Yes, business is more than often dirty, but absolute control is never clean. The mainstream media is comprised of them both and them both only. Profit and control. Mind control. Roughly 90%, if not more, of the population is brain dead, and the establishment knows it. So if you are watching this video, welcome to the 10%, the narrow way that leadeth to life. Let the MSM focus on their wide gates of lemmings, the broad way in which they spend billions to script reality for the broods. We will always be the outcasts. We will always be ostracized because of the truth and his name's sake. Get used to it. They must maintain that the majority believe a lie and continue to operate under strong delusions. So we will continue to operate in truth, righteousness, and faith. We must be comfortable in our despair, calm, and collected. So we may continue to expose their folly with precision and accuracy. We mustn't stumble over their mind games and power tactics, for we must endure to the end to be saved. 
and the battle has only just begun. Their attacks will continue, their false paradigms will proliferate, but we will continue to study and show thyself approved. With faith, wisdom, and righteousness, no man can call you a fool. As long as we operate under these ways, all their little insults and conspiracy theory talk will only make them appear foolish. We mustn't bite when they manufacture controversy. Their lists have been endless, from Clinton's emails to Trump's wall, tax returns and KKK and white supremacy ties. Looks like Obama's birth certificate story is coming back. Um, can't forget Zika, who was threatening the world at one point last year and now is mysteriously insignificant. Possibly it always was. Hint, hint. Um, now we have fake news and the new curveball. Russian hacks. As I've mentioned in some of my older works several months back, hacking and glitches will be a key conduit in their social engineering platform for 2016 and 17. Um, and here we are. They've subconsciously prepared us for this early in the election with their multitude of hacking scare reports. It's all about the patterns, guys. It's, it's just, it just destroys their credibility. Plus the gematria, crisis actors, and inducive language buzzwords that they're always using. It's just too easy to unravel and expose. They, they aren't even smart about it. And it's because they think we are stupid. And they aren't very smart to begin with. I mean, really? Back to that big, bad Russia Cold War programming? Oh, and ISIS has just vanished in thin air, I guess. Maybe they are on a government paid vacation in the Bahamas or something. I don't know. It's it's also convenient, isn't it? So so they are playing the Russia card right now. Who knows what will be next up, but it couldn't be more scripted and mid eighties TV movie ish. But the Cold War Psyop had worked so well for so long, I can understand why they chose to revamp it. If it ain't broke, why fix it, right? Then there is the laughable illusion of rivalry they create, pitting left versus right. Now they're doing this Facebook versus the government and CIA deal. <laughs> like, like they're all these groups battling against each other. When we know there are no sides, just one big program with a gaggle of agendas, all meant to corral us useless eaters into proper formation and hegemony. Keyword, hegemony cultural hegemony specifically overall the media is a mass scale psyop itself a cesspool of disinformation or mass echo chamber where everyone is reading from the similar script a strategic multiform employed by the state to maintain the societal hive mind to refine and ensure the proper groupthink now that there seems to be a surge in independent research, they have invented a fake news straw man for everyone to throw spears and arrows at. And that's fine, the truth will always prevail. Whether it's attacked or disrupted, it will never be silenced completely. As the Bernie Trump Perspective Channel coined it, uh, the censor gate seems to be the largest psyop being used right now. Thanks to BTP, he opened this idea up, and I, I couldn't agree with him more. I think he's spot on. And censorship is definitely around the bend. But now, new platforms may arrive. Um, new avenues will open up. The truth will not be completely suppressed. Though they will throw some forks in the road. The truth will not be suppressed. As long as it's founded in the truth of the Most High, that is. All the other half-truths and odd corners of the so-called truth community will face a different experience, I'm sure. But we are only concerned with God's truth and the power of Jesus Christ that he has bestowed upon us. We will continue to be meek, patient, and long-suffering, yet bold, sharp, and wise beyond that of the enemy. So now we face the truth police and their censorgate psyop as we undergo public shaming and persecution for wrong think. While the mainstream society is force-fed the media paradox, 
not to enlighten, but to leave the average person bewildered and at sea or overzealously confident and convinced by mere fables and lies. A multi-layered psyop within a psyop. They will pollute the information pool with lies, false scandals, and sensationalism to ultimately divert and forestall the acquisition of truth and reality. Yet this is only a shadow of things to come. Just be sure your foundation is built upon a rock and not sand. Thank you.